here's a preview of a very important interview with Dr. Paul Laviolette, in which we were disconnected 24 times, and a portion of the audio has been surgically removed. Find out what the powers that be don't want you to know. What is the real reason that they want this information still being hidden? Uh, well, I think it, it has some implications that it would change uh, society. Every time you have an advancement of technology, it's going to change society, like how the car brought us out of the horse and buggy age, and eventually the jet allowed us uh, to travel to foreign countries much quicker. With this technology, let's say you could go from New York to Sydney in uh, 15, 20 minutes. So at that point, you, you, the Earth is basically one city. That would be fantastic for commerce and everything. Every time there's an uh, increase of prosperity in the world, it's either because you can produce energy cheaper or you can get goods from, one, from point A to B quicker and less expensive. Faster. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, Scientific American did study on this through going back to the Stone Age days, and they say every time there was an invention that caused either of these things to happen, you had a, a major increase of uh, humanity's level of, uh, of prosperity. But why isn't this technology being used for commercial air travel? Give it as an example, like Boeing has been doing research on electric vetics for the military. And yes. I learned through a person who I know, who's with the government, that uh, Boeing had requested uh, the military uh, if they could be allowed to apply this technology to commercial use. You know, they're, of course, making uh, airplanes, uh, jets. And they were turned down. And this was just two years ago. There are actual experiments that you can do on your tabletop to prove that this works. On your tabletop, you can you can test that. Yeah. That's free energy right there. Exactly. The patent office is still denying patents if they claim uh, perpetual motion. Now, for anybody out there that thinks that this is just a conspiracy, well, it is a conspiracy, but it is not conspiracy theory. It's we're being conspiracy realists here by giving you facts, folks. Did you ever calculate how much this technique would reduce in fuel consumption? I would, to be conservative, I would say maybe to one-third at least. Do you believe the U.S. has field propulsion craft that can hover motionlessly? Oh, of course, yes. Can you tell us something that you have never said before that you would like to say on this show? The, the latest is this Australian fellow, you know, uh, and how he went about it. Uh, so he's basically interested in helping humanity and sharing the, uh, the ideas. Now you mentioned reverse engineering an extraterrestrial craft. Could a UFO use such a microwave beam to make crop circles? Yeah. In your opinion, who do you think makes the crop circles and for what purpose? It's believed by a large number of people that um, we're being visited by uh, other civilizations and they're using this as a way of communicating to us yes. to show that these are not just random patterns, they're sophisticated, uh, in some cases uh, showing a very sophisticated knowledge of mathematics. Uh, now, microwave, could such a microwave beam be used as a weapon? Uh, well, I believe it could have been used in the 911 uh, collapse of the World Trade Center, yes. Like Dr. Judy Wood? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's the main proponent of this idea, and I believe it has a lot of merit. With this technology, why do we even need nuclear weapons? If you can hit a target or multiple targets without affecting... Uh, in other words, you can limit the collateral damage and not make the whole planet radioactive. Yeah, well, with this technology, we can blow up the missile uh, at its launching pad, so there's no point for a country to even launch. I guess my question, uh, are some of the UFO craft that people all over the world are witnessing, could they be military craft? A large proportion of them could be these days. What's it going to take for the gatekeepers of the hidden knowledge, the hidden technologies, to be released. What would it take? A UFO to decloak and show itself? Even if there was a UFO to decloak, they're going to start trying to explain the propulsion in terms of uh, Einstein's theory. So if you were in charge of changing the paradigm, how would you start 
to change the paradigm? I'd start by saying, look, the first law of thermodynamics is incorrect. The second law of thermodynamics is incorrect. Uh, Newton's third law is incorrect. Uh, let's start teaching this and start, start teaching that these are they're sort of like canons that we should bow down to, which is the way it's done now. It's almost like a religious faith.